Hello everyone and welcome to a new vlog. As you can see, I am starting off this vlog in my gym clothes because I'm actually going to a photo shoot today, you guys. It's very much out of my comfort zone. I've never done anything like this before. But for those of you that don't know, I do work with a coach. So I do take part in group classes. They are three times a week and they are a mix of weight training and cardio classes. Now the coach I'm with is someone that I previously work with. I think we worked together for about two years. So I do know him pretty well. And he knows that I am into my filming and things like that and so when he had a photo shoot opportunity come up he did ask me to take part so I did want to start off this vlog so that I could show you guys that process because I feel like it would be fun to see and also because if I don't start this vlog I never will so that is what I'm doing I am currently reading two books which I will of course go into in a second but if you can hear any sort of sound if the camera moves I apologize I have a needy dog down here and yeah she is a bit of a pain today it's currently way too hot hot to walk her at the minute and so she's just full of energy but I hope you guys don't mind I know you like seeing her in the videos and she's my baby and I don't want to lock her out of the room so if you see me leaning forward to give her some strokes or anything like that then that is why and I do apologize I'm not actually that far into my two reads at the minute but yesterday I did pick up fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros I am so excited to read this book you guys there is so much hype around it and I have massive FOMO so I am going to be reading this one this month. I have recently joined Jodie from Vanilla Moon's Patreon and coincidentally this is the buddy read for the month so very glad that I decided to read this this month. It's taken the book community by storm recently and yeah I just want to see what all the hype is about to be honest with you guys. I really don't know anything about this book. All I know is that it's a fantasy involving dragons and dragon riders and there are certain trials that you have to partake in in order to become a dragon rider. However these trials are extremely deadly the chances of you dying are very high and it's not only the dragons themselves you need to look out for but also the fellow competitors because given a chance any one of those will kill you in order to better their chances of becoming a dragon rider so I feel like this is going to be extremely chaotic as I mentioned I'm not far through this I'm up to page 20 so I've only read one chapter which is shocking I've just been so busy you guys yesterday we went to a festival it was a little kind of Welsh festival we had Welsh music and bands and things like that and we love to go it's the thing that happens every year and it obviously helps us support the local community so that was really fun we didn't get back in until about half 10 at night and so yeah it was a very long day and then today I have this photo shoot this morning we also then need to go straight from there to do a food shop my mum is actually visiting as well she is home from her cruise so I'm very excited to see her she's been on a two-week cruise around the Mediterranean so she's definitely gonna have some stories to share with me and yeah it's just gonna be nice to have a catch-up so I'm gonna go to my brother's house to see my nieces and my mum and catch up with all of them so I don't have a lot of spare time for reading at the minute and in terms of my schoolwork I do have yearly reports to write now which is taking up a massive chunk of my time so I'm hoping that I can prioritize this this week make sure that I actually set some time aside to read this one I am debating filming a spoiler filled vlog for this I have filmed the intro but I just don't know if it's going to be too chaotic because as I mentioned I'm just so busy and I would really like to give you guys coherent thoughts and regular updates as well so we'll see with this one but from the 20 pages that I've read I have really enjoyed it it's very high stakes from the get-go and very intense there's already been a scene in this where someone has died <laughs> so yeah that's the type of book this is and I feel like it's definitely going to be my type of book I really do like the writing style so far I'm really interested in the setting as well and even though we've not seen a lot of our characters yet I do feel strongly towards certain individuals and I feel like the character development throughout this book is going to be really good so yeah this is my first book and then the second book that I have started is actually on Scribd so I will just get it up to see how far through I am but that one is Mindhunter Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit by John E. Douglas and Mark Allshaker. I've been wanting to read this book for a while I started watching the series on Netflix and I was hooked from the get-go for some reason I stopped watching it but I do intend to go back it has Jonathan Groff in it as one of the main characters who I love and yeah it's essentially about following these two detectives as they set up a criminal profiling unit and they go on to talk to different serial killers to see what their kind of methods are and how 
how their brain works as they're committing the crimes in order to hopefully then be able to analyse future criminals and catch them a bit quicker. As I mentioned, I loved that series. I am very much into my true crime and so I feel like this book is going to be a really good insight into the minds of the serial killers and also a look into the minds of the people who are trying to catch the serial killers as well. Again, I haven't really gotten too far through this one. I'm up to chapter 4 out of 22 and I've got 9 hours and 10 minutes left. This is one that I'm going to be listening to on my commute to and from work so hopefully I will get this read this week. At the minute though it's just been kind of background information about one of our detectives. It's essentially covered how he's gotten into being a criminal profiler or wanting to be a criminal profiler just following his background and some of the things that influenced him in order to lead him down this path which in itself has been really interesting to be honest with you guys and I am just so into it and I cannot wait to find out more about criminal profiling and the minds of the serial killers. So yeah I have two very interesting books, two very different ones but I am definitely excited for both. I feel like I do need a bit of a mix of books at the minute because I have just come out of a reading slump and so to have a fast-paced fantasy book and also a non-fiction book about something that I am interested in is hopefully going to mean that I can power through, I will just get immersed in the stories and get through them relatively quickly. So yeah those are the plans for today. As I mentioned I probably won't read too much because Tom is going to drive me to this photo shoot he might take part depending on if Luis wants him to or not but yeah he's the designated driver. For anyone that's interested I am wearing these leggings and I've also got a sports bra on which matches but I've put a vest on because I want to cover up a little bit you know because we're going shopping and all that I thought it's best to wear something to cover me up a little bit more however the gym I go to is always so hot and so yeah I'm gonna wear a cute matching set I will probably post a better picture up on screen for you guys now actually it is the rosewood set from honor active most of my gym wear is from honor active or gymshark however I don't tend to wear nicer gym sets to the actual gym because I don't want to get them ruined which sounds really stupid I know so it's really nice to kind of show off this set feel really confident in it and hopefully get some good pictures so I'm hoping I can film some kind of behind the scenes for you guys and I hope you enjoy getting a glimpse into a different part of my life today long time no update but I'm finally here. I've just filmed a very exciting video which is why I'm a little bit more dolled up than usual and for that one I'm actually working with a company that I have worked with before and who I really do love so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that on my channel. If it is live by the time this video goes up I will leave it linked up above and down below but I need to update this vlog because I haven't done so since my last clip. And we've got some catching up to do, you guys. So, first up, you will have seen my little photo shoot. I will pop a picture up on screen now of one of the final results. I did go on a squat rack and then I did go on the assault bike. But there you have it. I hope you enjoy seeing something a little bit different from me. I do have a fitness Instagram, which I'm not sure if I mentioned before, which I will pop up on screen right now. It's rianon.fitness. And you are more than welcome to give me a follow there and follow me along on my fitness journey. I also played badminton as well which I forgot to mention in the last clip that I did but yeah 
yeah, completely forgot that that was happening until about two hours before. So I did end up doing the photo shoot. Luckily, I was in my gym clothes anyway, and so I headed off to badminton then and came back home meal prepped and then was able to finally start reading. Now, before I actually go into my reading updates, I do have two parcels here to unbox with you guys. I've been holding off on unboxing these because I just thought it would be nice to do it with you on camera. And I am very, very excited to finally get to open them. So first up, I think I'm gonna go with this bigger box actually. I am notoriously bad at opening these boxes guys, so bear with me. There we go. Let's see if I can give you a sneak peek. Nope, that literally gives nothing away. So this one, oh okay this one is morgan is my name by sophie keach from what i remember this is an arthurian retelling focusing on morgana so i will just read you the synopsis because i'm honestly unsure myself it says when king uther pendragon murders her father and tricks her mother into marriage morgan refuses to be crushed trapped amid the machinations of men in a world of isolated castles and gossiping courts she discovers secret powers vengeful and brilliant it's not long before morgan becomes a worthy adversary to merlin in influential sorcerer to the king but fighting for her kingdom she risks losing everything her reputation her loved ones and her life this just sounds phenomenal it's actually the first book in a new trilogy according to the back of this and it's apparently an atmospheric feminist novel exploring the early life of famed villainess morgan le fay hopefully i'm saying that right set against the colorful chivalric backdrop of what will become king arthur's court where men are kings and heroes and the women little more than decoration yet morgan's refusal to simply settle for a fate handed down it means she soon sees tensions ahead as well as the heady possibility of freedom and as influential sorcerer merlin watches morgan secretly discovers awesome powers powers of myth made real this sounds fantastic it's right up my street i'm hoping that it's done well and if you guys have been on my channel for a while you'll know that back in the day when a load of arthurian retellings were being released i had a bit of an issue with them because for those of you who don't know i'm welsh i studied welsh at university it's my first language and i have a deep connection into Welsh history, Welsh myths and Welsh stories and King Arthur is actually first ever mentioned in a piece of Welsh text and when Wales was conquered that's when England kind of came over, took these stories and passed them off as their own and so a lot of different elements have been misinterpreted and yeah it just kind of irks me a bit me being the Welsh history nerd that I am so yeah that definitely has me a little bit more apprehensive but as a story itself I'm so excited for this. Merlin is one of my favourite ever TV shows and if if it's anything like that I am sure to love it. I have really liked the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White and recently I really enjoyed Legendborn as well which both tackled the Arthurian legend. It's also a beautiful book you guys, can you see that cover? I just absolutely love it, I think it's gorgeous. And then this one is very thin actually, I do know what this one is but I wasn't expecting it to be this thin because I did pay quite a bit of money for this one so let's just see if you get a better sneak peek. Oh, okay. We have some sprayed edges, which I wasn't actually expecting. Maybe that's why I paid a little bit more for this book. Right, this is really difficult to get out of the box, but I think I'm there. Yeah, there we go. This one is You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron, who is an author that I am familiar with. I don't know if I have another one of their works. Yes, I do. Cinderella is Dead, of course. I haven't read that one yet, but I do own it. And yeah, this is the newest release. I honestly just know that it's a kind of YA horror slasher type book from what I've gathered and the cover is ultimately what had me sold on it because look at this you guys and as I mentioned we do have some really cool sprayed edges as well. This is a Waterstones exclusive edition so I don't know if it's signed or whether it's just with the sprayed edges. I think it's just the sprayed edges. And then the synopsis reads, at Camp Mirror Lake, Tara is the name of the game, but can you survive the night? Charity Curtis has the summer job of her dreams, playing the final girl at Camp Mirror Lake. Guests pay to be scared in this full contact terror game as Charity and her summer crew recreate scenes from a classic slasher film, The Curse of Camp Mirror Lake. The more realistic the fear, the better for business. But on the last weekend of the season, Charity's co-workers begin disappearing. And when one ends up dead, Charity's role as the final girl suddenly becomes all too real. If Charity and her girlfriend Busy hope to survive the night, they'll need to figure out what the killer is after. But as they unravel the bloody history of the real Mirror Lake, Charity discovers that there may be more to the story than she ever suspected. That sounds really good. I am normally not one for horror slasher type of books because I just get too scared. However, I do enjoy a 
YA take on it every now and again. I do enjoy Karen M. McManus's books, as you can see I have a collection there, and I tend to read those around this time every year, just because they're quick reads that I can read by the pool if I'm on holiday or out in my garden. And I don't know, something just drew me to this book, and I feel like I am gonna really enjoy it. This also seems to have a bit of mixed media in here. I just saw a page with the dialogue set out differently, but I will never be able to find it now, you watch. It was some sort of transcript or something. There we go. I hope this isn't a spoiler, but I don't know if you can see here, it's a little bit differently formatted. So that will hopefully be a different element to it. And yeah, I'm very excited for this one. It's a sapphic book as well, so we do love the representation. And yeah, hopefully I can get to this one soon. I feel like it's one that I'll fly through. It's only short and I'm really hoping that I do enjoy it because I haven't really seen a lot about it. I haven't read Cinderella is Dead as I mentioned and I really do need to read something from this author. So hopefully I will read it and enjoy it and that will spur me on to pick up Cinderella is Dead because that one has been on my shelf for a long time. Right, moving on to my bookish updates. I'm first off going to talk about Fourth Wing, you guys. The cover is downstairs because I do take the covers of my books off to read and guys, this is fantastic and I'm so so happy that I'm saying that because I was terrified of this book. The hype surrounding it is insane and yeah after the first chapter I knew that I would like it. It was just so well done and I am just hooked you guys. Every single spare minute I have I just want to read this book but I know that I need to have a big enough chunk of time so that I can sit down and actually immerse myself in it because I don't want to just be reading a chapter here and there because that would drive me insane. I need to devour this book. So I am currently over halfway now. Oh my gosh that looks really exciting. I am on page 310 and oh I just have so many emotions. This book is so fantastically written. The world building is fantastic, the characters are amazing and of course we do have the dragons in here which are on another level guys. They are fantastic, they're so funny and yeah they just don't give a shit and it's brilliant. So yeah we have all of that together plus we have the high stakes element of this book where essentially everyone can kill each other and the dragons can even kill people in this book if they're not really happy with them or whatever as well. So all in all it's just like a crazy ride but I am really 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 enjoying it. Hopefully I told you what the synopsis is about in the first clip but I honestly can't quite remember. So in this book we follow Violet Sorengale who has trained her whole life to be a scribe in the scribe quadrant. However her mother is a high-ranking general and both her and her other two children have been in the riders quadrant and have then become dragon riders. And so one day she ultimately tells Violet that that is going to be her fate which Violet is terrified for because as I mentioned this place is deadly. The challenges and trials that they have to pass taken are aimed to kill because only the strongest are meant to survive. If you can't survive the challenges then you are no way going to survive being on a dragon in battle and so the stakes are extremely extremely high, so deadly and as I mentioned you see it in this book like people are killed off and it just happens like that and then it's like okay people have died get on with it. Like it's so brutal but that is definitely one of the things that has me hooked because Rebecca Yaros doesn't pull her punches and everything that happens is very impactful to the plot and the characters in this one as well. Everything has a point, you know? It's not just kind of thrown in there for shock value. It is there to move the story along, which I definitely appreciate. But yeah, Violet ends up having to go to the Riders Quadrant and she is put into the fourth wing. I don't really want to say much more than that. Essentially, they train to be Dragon Riders. They have to complete all of these different tasks whilst other people are trying to kill them. Violet is a lot weaker than everyone else. She obviously hasn't really trained her whole life to be in this quadrant and so she does face disadvantages in that aspect but as well as that she does have some health issues. She's a lot more brittle and frail than a lot of the other riders and so she not only has to use her wits to survive she also has to think outside the box and not manipulate the situation but use her training as a scribe to kind of get around everything and stay alive essentially which is difficult in a place where everyone wants to kill you. Oh not only that her mother is hated by a lot of other wing leaders because she was actually responsible for executing a lot 
part of these people's parents. Essentially there was an uprising a few years back and as punishment all the people involved were executed, their children were made to watch and their children have to be a part of the Riders Quadrant now as their punishment because as I mentioned these trials are designed to kill them and essentially it's like an easy way out for the generals to keep the children of the revolutionaries in check and to possibly kill them without killing them as well and so yeah there are a lot of people in here with a grudge against her mother which ultimately turns into a grudge against her. People just find her weak in general and yeah Violet as a main character is just amazing. She's so badass, absolutely love her and I can't wait to see where the story goes from here. I'm terrified, don't get me wrong, but I'm very very excited. The stakes have been extremely high throughout this book and they're just gonna get more and more intense so yeah I just want to sit down and read this one but I'm going to my mum's house today, it's Father's Day tomorrow and it's also my stepbrother's birthday next week so not sure how much reading I'm going to get done but I am going to bring this one with me. And then the second book that I've been reading is of course Mindhunter. Now I do have the physical copy here to show you guys, I honestly don't know where I am in the physical copy to be honest with you. Last time I put my bookmark in I was on chapter 4 and I am very much near the end now. I'm just going to check Scribd to see where I'm actually at so that I can give you guys this proper update. Should have done this before but didn't think it through. Okay, I'm 92% of the way through at the minute so I have about one hour left which I will definitely be able to listen to either today or tomorrow. So this is going to be done this week. I'm hoping that Fourth Wing is going to get done this week but I don't know because I just want to savour it but I also want to devour it. But this one is very very interesting. So we essentially follow John Douglas as he sets up a criminal profiling unit for the FBI. There are so many instances in this where he sits down with serial killers and kind of probes them to figure out what actually made them start killing people, how they got away with it, what their thought process was and then because he's spoken to so many different serial killers, the killings that are happening after he spoke to them, he can kind of sort through all this information and give the FBI a profile of the killer that is pretty much accurate every time. The way that this is written is actually very accessible. I was a little bit scared diving into this one, not gonna lie, just because I felt like there would be a lot of kind of medical terminology and jargon and different things like that. However, I have really, really enjoyed listening to this. It is so interesting to see John Douglas at work but also to see the interviews that he's had with the serial killers. It's genuinely crazy and what he does is he kind of starts a point, he links it to a serial killer, we go through that serial killer's history, we see his thought process as he helps people to come up with this profile and then they ultimately catch the killer and yeah we kind of follow him as he goes through his life and as his career progresses and as his knowledge increases as well and as well as that we see the advancements in science and technology that have ultimately helped this department along the way as well. I just find this so interesting. A lot of this is psychological which of course is sometimes really hard to kind of nail down because psychology, the human brain, it's a lot <laughs> and yeah I feel like it's not an exact science but seriously this guy is insane. He can kind of look at crime scene photos and just from that alone and a bit of background information from the police he'll know what type of person the victim is, what he looks like, his race, his background, everything like that and he is pretty pretty much on the money every single time and yeah it's just fantastic to read about to be honest with you guys. It sometimes doesn't even feel like a non-fiction book, it's just that easy to just listen to and follow along with and yeah this one does actually have pictures in it which I will have to go through and look at properly once I do finish the book but I am listening to the audiobook on script as I mentioned. I'm listening to the one narrated by John Douglas that is one narrated by Mark Allshaker however I just clicked on the first one that popped up and it was the John Douglas one. I feel like I went down the right route for me by listening to it. I feel like sitting down and reading it physically would have been a little bit heavy. However, just having someone else tell their story, especially as it's narrated by the author in a way I guess, it's just so easy to get back into and I feel like there's something always a bit more personal to that as well. So yeah, I'm very much enjoying this one. I feel like I'm just rambling on because this is what happens. I don't update and then I need to tell you guys everything that's going on in the space of like 10 minutes. So I do apologise. At the minute Mindhunter is kind of a four star I want to say and I don't want to jinx it but fourth wing is going to be a new favorite book of mine absolutely love it so far. Don't know if it's gonna end in a good way, I feel like it's gonna have a cliffhanger but the second book is coming out later this year so yeah I definitely won't have to wait too long for that and I'll be reading it as soon as it comes out. I don't know if it's a duology or a series but 
absolutely love this one. Very much enjoying my intensa as well and yeah I feel like this has been a really good reading week and I'm actually so so happy about it because I've just felt really slumpy after reading a few books this year and I'm really happy now that I have found two books at once that I'm loving especially Fourth Wing because I haven't felt this connected to a book in a while and yeah it's giving me kind of like Throne of Glass, A Court of Mist and Fury kind of vibes where I just was sucked in and wanted to know everything I could about the people, the world, yeah. I'm just, I'm just there guys. I'm at that level. I absolutely love it. And so my plan is to finish these two this weekend. It's currently Saturday. I'm going up to my mum's as I mentioned until tomorrow and then we'll see whether I can finish these because I do have yearly reports that I need to write for school as well, which... <laughs> take a while but that might be an issue for another day right I am gonna end this clip here once again sorry if it's been an extremely rambly one I don't know when I'll next update you guys but I am gonna take my camera with me to my mum's so if I do manage to read a bit more of fourth wing or listen to a bit more of mindhunter or hopefully finish mindhunter I can let you guys know but for now I'm gonna end this clip here and I'll chat to you guys once I have some more updates right guys I do have some reading updates for you I can't quite remember when I last updated this vlog but I have just gotten in from work excuse the state of me and I am actually planning on sitting down now and hopefully finishing out fourth wing but before I go into my thoughts on the books that I'm reading I do have a parcel here that Kiwi is very interested in this was on my doorstep today and yeah I actually did open it but I haven't looked inside because I wanted to film this vlog clip anyway and I thought, you know what, it would be nice to get it on screen because I don't know if this is an early birthday present. For those of you who don't know, my birthday is coming up in July. It's on July the 3rd. But that is quite a while away and I haven't ordered anything. So yeah, I'm very intrigued. Let's see what we have though. Oh my gosh, who has done this? Okay, I'll get the book out and I'll also get the note out because we do have a gift note in here oh my goodness I can't seem to get it right so this one is from Claire it says hello friend I just wanted to send you a little something to brighten your day I love this series and I hope you enjoy it too all the best Clary books thank you so so much Claire I honestly don't know what has made you want to send me this book but I'm truly truly thankful and yeah I am so excited to continue on with the series because I have loved what I've read in this series so far and yeah you've just helped me grow my collection so the book that Claire has bought me is Six Tudor Queens Anna of Cleve Queen of Secrets by Alison Weir which is the fourth book in the Six Tudor Queens series now I have definitely been putting off reading this series I read the first book absolutely loved it I got halfway through the second book and just put it down for some reason and I have really been wanting to pick it back up lately I do have the third book and now I of course have the fourth book so I definitely think I will be getting to this over summer I am honestly so interested in the Tudor era and everything that happened there. There was so much reform and change and yeah, just chaos in terms of Henry VIII and his six wives. And this is a series that focuses on the women of the story rather than on Henry VIII because he gets enough attention, you know? The women need more. Six is one of my favorite ever musicals. Absolutely love it. That is of course about Henry VIII's six wives as well. But yeah, this is beautifully written. It is historical fiction, but Alison Weir is a historical historian so it is historically accurate. Of course she's taken liberties with some of the events and things that happened but yeah I honestly am just blown away. It's not even a birthday gift I don't think. It's just yeah something to brighten my day which it definitely has. I oh my gosh I can't believe it. Thank you so so much. You really didn't have to. It's made my day though and yeah I just Oh, I can't, I can't process that right now, but I'm so thankful for this. Cannot wait to get to it, and I will let you know my thoughts on it once I do, Claire. And then, reading updates. I feel like I'm going to fly through this bit because I do need to take Kiwi for a walk. As I mentioned, I've just gotten in from school, but I would prefer for her to go on her walk now because I have texted Adriana and I've asked if her dogs want to come with Kiwi, so I think we're going to take them to a kind of secluded area that we have down by the river here, which will be lovely, and yeah, she's got so much energy so I feel like that would be a perfect way for her to let that out 
But first off, I have now finished Mind Hunter and I gave this one four stars. This was such an intriguing novel and I honestly don't really know how to wrap up my thoughts on it properly. It was of course a deep dive into the psychology of serial killers, a look into what their motives were, what the warning signs were, could anything have been prevented, what were the police doing, how were they thinking as they were committing the crimes and then how did it escalate to the point that they were then caught. Of course, we focused on a lot of different instances of serial killers and just the kind of random one-off kidnapping or bombing or bank robbery as well because it's not just about focusing on serial killers, it's criminal profiling in general. So yeah, John Douglas was tasked with essentially coming up with a description of a perpetrator that would lead the police to a suspect in the case. This book is very well written and I mean that in the sense that it wasn't really that heavy for me. I feel like listening to it was definitely the right route. I did try and read it physically and I did struggle. However, listening to this, it just gave me the opportunity to retain the information better somehow. And yeah, it just really did grip me and keep my focus. And I would say, because some people have pointed out that they think it might be a bit too gory for them, a bit too scary. It's definitely not. Like they do go into some detail about different serial killers and killings and cases. However, I feel like it's not actually that bad. I feel like if you were to listen to a podcast or, you know, watch a true crime YouTube video, then it would be a lot more intense. However, I feel like this one is just a critical analysis of how John Douglas came up with a profile rather than a deep dive into the serial killer's crimes. So if you were apprehensive about that, I'd say give it a go, especially if you do have script because the audiobook is on there. If you don't have script, I do have a link where I think you can get a month free and then I also get a month free if if you sign up through it. So I will make sure to leave that link in the description box below. But yeah, I really did enjoy that book. It was an interesting read. I'm glad I read it. And I'm glad that I have ticked off another nonfiction book for this year because I've read a few and that is not like me at all. So yeah, very happy with that one. And I definitely need to continue watching Mindhunter because yeah, I put that off for way too long. And then because I finished that audiobook, I did need to start another one so I could listen to it on my commute to and from work. And the one I've chosen is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is a book that I've had on my TBR for a while. I got it in a fairy loot box, I believe it was. And since June is Pride Month, since Juno Dawson is trans, and since this book is apparently filled with amazing representation, I did want to give it a go. I did want to see what the hype is about. And yeah, so far I've started it. I'm up to chapter 14 I think. I might be wrong. I don't have the physical book to show you. I really didn't plan this update out very well but when do I ever? I do actually have my phone here which I will just grab because it's just easier for me to tell you guys. Oops I've got three texts from my boss so I'm gonna look at that in a minute <laughs> but I'm currently on chapter 20 out of 68 according to Scribd, but I have 5 hours and 51 minutes left of the audiobook. I'm really enjoying it so far. Not quite sure where it's going and what the actual plot is. I will give you a proper synopsis once I kind of wrap this vlog up because I just plan on filming one or two more clips before I close off this vlog and yeah it's essentially a book about witches and there is a prophecy that emerges which shows the destruction of the world essentially at the hands of a demon. So yeah, that's all I know. That's all I've really gotten. Again, I'm listening to the audiobook on script, which is fantastic. The narrator is amazing. She's so funny and I'm having a really good time listening to it. It's kind of an easier one to just put on in the background, whereas my Hunter, I feel like I had to concentrate a bit more. This one I can just put on and if I zone out a little bit, it's fine. I still know what's going on. So nothing has really happened so far, but I am enjoying it. I'm loving the characters and yeah, I'm really enjoying the writing style as well because I've never actually read a book by Juno Dawson before. I know that they're a popular YA author and I believe that this is their first dive into adult fantasy. So yeah, so far I'm having a very enjoyable experience and hopefully that continues. But all that aside, I'm about to finish fourth wing you guys after I take you for a walk of course. But I'm on page 430 out of 500. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get myself spoiled. Oh my gosh, why am I looking at the last page? So I barely have any pages left to go now. I am terrified. It pained me to put this book down last night, but I, oh, I just did not want to finish this book when I wasn't like fully ready for it. Whereas now I'm just anticipating it. I'm desperate for it. Kiwi's of course deciding to play with the noisiest ball that she owns right now. Can I have it for a minute? Got on? Got on? 
Come here. Come here. Gosh up. Okay, I've stolen it. She might pop up here or start crying. I will give it to her in a sec, don't worry. This is just... Oh, that's how I feel reading this whole book. It's phenomenal. I'm loving it. Nothing has changed there. The writing is fantastic. The characters, oh my gosh, are amazing. And yeah, we've had a few developments with certain relationships. There have been a few sex scenes in here, which I definitely do feel like added to the story. They weren't just kind of thrown in there for the sake of it, which I really did appreciate but yeah they were steamy <laughs> and I actually read one of them in the car and I was just like oh my god this is not the time or the place for me to be reading this right now but there we go I couldn't put it down I'm still not quite sure how this is gonna end as I mentioned I don't really have that much to go and I still don't quite know where we're going with it so yeah I'm very intrigued and terrified to see how it's gonna go but oh this is such a high stakes book there is so much angst and drama and I'm just eating it all up I will say that the fairy loot edition of this went on sale today and I missed out on the fairy loot edition which I honestly could cry about. I clicked on the early access email as soon as it hit my inbox at 1pm. I was put in a queue and was made to wait an hour and a half only to then find out that the book was sold out. Bearing in mind I'm meant to be teaching a class of four to eight year olds and yeah the stress I felt this afternoon, the disappointment I felt through not getting it was just oh it was just awful like I'd put an alarm on my phone I'd set myself up and yeah to not get it has actually really crushed me but I do think fairy loots are gonna do a reprint I honestly didn't think that the book was signed anyway so if they do reprint and it isn't signed it's not the end of the world I just love the edition Kiwi actually knocked my cup of tea over when I was reading this outside and yeah, I have tea stains on the pages now, so I would like a pristine, lovely copy. I am currently looking at making a custom order with a bookish shop that will hopefully give me some lovely sprayed edges. There are a few additions going online for this book now as well, but I'm at the point at the minute where I've just bought a holiday. I've just booked stuff for my birthday as well, and I just don't have the money right now. So I'm waiting till payday, which is two days away. And then, yeah, maybe I'll treat myself to a birthday gift. We shall see. But yeah I'm really disappointed and I'm just gutted because this is definitely going to be a new favourite of mine like you you can tell by the reaction and I kind of wish that I did film a dedicated reading vlog now because I'd love to look back on that but I just didn't have the time I was just so sucked in I didn't want to have to stop every few pages to update you guys and yeah I'm terrified but very excited this has just been such a nice experience I haven't felt this way about a book in a while and so yeah I'm very very happy but I'm also extremely terrified so I'm gonna gonna take you for a walk now my camera is going to shut off now anyway and yeah I'm gonna get to reading and I will update you guys once I finish <laughs> in the exact same spot as I was last time I updated you but honestly I just could not be asked moving the camera but I have literally just gotten in from work I haven't even taken off my coat yet but I wanted to update this vlog because I have finally finished both fourth wing and her majesty's royal coven I'll start off with fourth wing I guess you guys have seen my reactions throughout that book is phenomenal. I definitely don't think it's the best book ever written, but the way I felt whilst reading it is something that I haven't experienced in a long time. And yeah, the way that book just had me on the edge of my seat, I was just, oh my gosh, it was a range of different emotions reading that book. And I'm still trying to process it a few days after finishing it and I just can't like my thoughts are all just kind of like screaming at me in my head I loved it so much but I definitely think that it's for good reason there are a lot of negative reviews out there
there which you're more than welcome to go and look for for yourselves. I haven't really watched any. I might do just to kind of see how other people are feeling about it but yeah from my own personal experience I absolutely love this book. It was exactly what I needed. It was kind of action packed from the get go but it had such good character development throughout. We of course have dragons which is an element that I am obsessed with. The dragons in this are just hilarious. They are so sarcastic but so badass and yeah they don't really give a shit about anyone to be honest because they know that they are the superior race which yeah I just absolutely loved. The relationships throughout this as well were just done so well. There were some things that happened that I wish didn't and that really did emotionally scar me which I of course won't go into in this vlog because I'm not going to talk spoilers but wow if you've read like the last hundred pages you will know what I'm talking about and yeah thanks Kiwi I need the love right now because whew, that was difficult <laughs> that was difficult and yeah I don't want to read something like that ever again because I <laughs> heartbroken what is wrong with you i was heartbroken and i don't think i'll ever be okay about that but rebecca yaros definitely isn't afraid to pull a punches of course the kind of setting of this book sets it up so that people are gonna die someone literally dies in the first chapter like <laughs> they're just gone but yeah it was a phenomenal book had an amazing time reading it it's a new favorite of mine i'm so sad that i don't have any exclusive editions of it but i did actually manage to find an edition from the book box i believe it's called which I will pop a picture of the edition on screen for you now so that you can see what it's like. I will also leave it linked down below for you guys if you do want to check it out. I was a bit apprehensive because I believe it's an Indian website and of course I'm from the UK so I wasn't sure how that was going to go but a lot of you guys have assured me that you've bought from them before and that everything has worked smoothly. So I have now gone ahead and bought a special edition of this book which I'm so happy about and I have also messaged a lovely company that I first heard about at Yelk called Kingdom Book Designs I believe. I'll just double check that. Yeah kingdom book designs and i kind of asked them if they could do something similar to the waterstone sprayed edges just because i love how they look and the owner was lovely she was chatting to me for a while she of course said that she can't do the exact same thing because obviously she doesn't want to steal anyone's artwork which i completely get and i wasn't really asking for the exact same but i'd want it to be inspired by you know so i am gonna send my book over to her and she's gonna do some lovely spread edges for me on my own personal copy hopefully so yeah that should look good. I'm so excited. I wish I got my hands on the Fairy Loot edition. I wish I had the first edition from Waterstones because that is just so stunning. I honestly don't know how I didn't manage to pre-order it because I'm so good with my pre-orders, guys. And this one just completely flew under my radar, which I'm gutted about. But it's fine. I'm gonna have special editions. It's definitely a new favourite book of mine. And we don't even have to wait that long for the second book to come out. It's coming out later on this year, I believe in November. I may be wrong. But you guys know, as soon as the special edition is announced, I'm gonna pre-order it. And yeah, I'm very, very happy to now have a new favourite book. So if you haven't read Fourth Wing, or if you're scared of the hype, please pick it up, give it a go, and I promise you will not regret it. And then, as I mentioned, I have also finished Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I have honestly just finished this as I was walking into my house. I really wanted to get it finished sooner than this but I'm so happy that I did take my time with it because I listened to the audiobook. It was phenomenal guys and this really did beat all my expectations. I wasn't really sure what I was diving into. I knew it was a kind of urban fantasy contemporary style novel featuring witches which yeah I've just never read anything close to this before and I was definitely a little bit apprehensive however diving in I just fell in love guys the characters are just so relatable they are fantastic they are so well fleshed out their morals are amazing they are all for girl power and just a love for women and celebrating women empowering women and of course a main point in this book is that we have a prophecy stating that a child is going to kind of come into the witch's world and essentially raise a demon and throw them into a war and so not long after when a boy turns up the coven or some members of the coven think that the prophecy is talking about him however we do see that this child is just in such a mental turmoil they are a boy but they want to transition into being a girl they know deep down that they're a girl but yeah they've always been scared they've always been oppressed and so to see some of these witches be so welcoming but also to see the discrimination that trans people face 
every day, let alone in a fantastical setting was just so powerful. It really does make you sit back and wonder why are people so bothered about other people's choices and what they identify as and how they want to live their lives. Like I genuinely don't see how people have a problem with other people being their true selves. And so yeah, to see it in this was so powerful. It was so well done. As I mentioned, Juna Dawson is a trans woman. So the representation comes from her firsthand experience. And yeah, I just absolutely love this book. I'm so glad I read it. The ending of this guys has just blown me away and yeah I'm just desperate for the second book now I am gonna try and get the matching fairy loot edition but I feel like that's gonna be hard to get but yeah I just did not expect to love this book as much as I did I've given it four 4.5 stars maybe a five star I'm not too sure I'm gonna sit on it for a few days and see how I feel afterwards but yeah absolutely love this one if you're a bit unsure or you're a bit scared of the hype for this one then maybe try the audiobook because that's how I consume the story and I'm so glad that I did because the narrator is just phenomenal and yeah, I am so so glad that I finally decided to read this one It's one that I've been wanting to get to since I got it in a photo loop box But I've just been putting it off I've never read anything from Juno Dawson before and I know that she's a popular YA author And so to see her dive into adult fantasy, I was a little bit apprehensive, but she smashed it guys This is such a good book. It raises so many important topics and yeah I just feel like everyone needs to read this and whether you read it physically or listen to the audiobook You will have a good time and yeah I just really did enjoy it and as I mentioned the ending of this I wasn't expecting at all and yeah I will be pre-ordering the second book and I will probably get to it as soon as it comes out if the audiobook is available actually because it might not be but yeah I would highly recommend I've had two amazing books to close off this week and Mindhunter was also an amazing book so three really solid reads this week I'm so so glad about that because I've just had a few bad experiences with reading lately for some reason and I just haven't been wanting to pick books up so I'm so so glad now that I've had a week of reading some amazing books and yeah let me know if you do pick any of these up if you have read them already please leave me your spoiler free thoughts down below as well but I am gonna end this video here because I feel like it has gone on for a while thank you for sticking with me as per usual though it truly does mean the world to me if you are still here leave me a yellow emoji for this book it is the brightest book on my shelves and I absolutely love it so if you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and leave me a yellow yellow emoji down in the comments. I say it all the time but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me and it just baffles me that you guys watch these videos until the end. As well as that please don't forget that you can click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. My birthday's coming up soon so I have a lot of fun videos planned for that and yeah I do just post bookish videos in general so if that's your type of thing then please do consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my little corner of the internet. This is genuinely the best community ever and I do appreciate each and every single one of you so yeah please go ahead and make sure you do all of that but for now I'm gonna end this video here and I will see you soon in my next one goodbye